Hello guys, this is Justin Bibeled and welcome to this episode of Don't Panic, It's Organic. Ilalaban kahit kanino, oo, simple lang ako at malabo mong magdipuhan Kaya okay nang kahit sa FB mo lang mapusuan kasi Di na mapigilan ng sariling mapaibig sa iyo Ano ba to? Gusto ka laging ma- Okay, a last topic for alkenes would be reactions involving alkenes. So there are actually hydrogenation, halogenation, hydration, and hydrohalogenation of alkenes. They are actually only basic for reactions of alkenes. So, so what are these three reactions we have? Uh, so let's go first for the next uh, reaction that is actually hydrogenation. So, we say hydrogenation, we are actually adding hydrogen to a carbon-to-carbon -carbon double bond to give an alkane. So, it's basically we are converting alkenes to alkane because we are actually breaking the bonds for the carbon-carbon double bonds are actually uh, be broken down and actually your hydrogen now would be added to that carbon. Okay, both of those carbon, two carbons that contains the double bond will be added with uh, hydrogen okay since they are actually lacking a uh, total of two hydrogens then these two hydrogens would be added to that carbon to carbon double bond so what would be the general formula for that so you have your alkene okay so this is your alkene so it actually attacks your hydrogen because these are actually rich in electrons then with the presence oh don't forget with the presence of your catalyst okay so these are actually known as your catalyst so just like in the reaction for alkanes you have also catalyst there i told you okay like for example halogenation for alkanes or monobromination monochlorination i told you that heat should be there present and also uh, <coughs> it is present or light okay so in this case for hydrogenation the catalysts are actually you have metal you have platinum catalyst palladium catalyst and you have also your nickel catalyst under heat or pressure so in this case your carbon to carbon double one will attack your hydrogen with the presence of the catalyst then therefore this will be broken down and your both two hydrogens would be added to your carbon and this one also will be added to that carbon because this one will be broken down uh, carbon to carbon will be broken down so your alkene would now be becomes an alkane. So you notice the addition of two hydrogens. So from carbon to carbon double bond, that becomes carbon to carbon single bond. So from alkane, it becomes an alkane. Okay? So very basic. So write a balance equation showing the hydrogenation of one pentane and trans two pentane. So remember for hydrogenation, you should have your starting material is an alkene, then you have your hydrogen, then you have your catalyst. So your catalyst could be a platinum, palladium, or nickel in the presence of heat or pressure. So, and then your product should be an alkane. Okay? <coughs> so, for example, you have one pentin. Okay? So your one pentin will undergo hydrogenation, so you have hydrogen, with the presence of your catalyst, so in this case, the catalyst is nickel. So you can either put platinum, palladium, or nickel. But most specifically, nickel would be a very good uh, catalyst because it's a cheap, cheaper than your platinum and your palladium. Okay? So, involving this reaction, you have one pentane, then you hydrogenate it, the presence of your nickel catalyst, so... Those carbon to carbon will be broken down. That becomes your carbon to carbon single bond, and both the hydrogens will be added to that carbon. Okay, so if you're one pentane, it will become pentane. Okay, from alkene, it becomes an alkene. Okay, how about your hydrogenation for trans two pentane? So the same. Okay, your trans two pentane. So this is trans two pentane. So we already knew how do we. <coughs> determine if it is a cis or trans so then hydrogenation then you have also your nickel okay as your catalyst 
then your carbon to carbon double bond will be broken down and it will form to carbon to carbon single bond okay then your both hydrogens there will be added for both of that carbon so that becomes uh, an alkane okay so from trans to pentane it becomes pentane so both of this uh, alkene no are actually being converted with pentane okay with the presence of your hydrogen and your catalyst, which is actually a nickel catalyst. So from alkene, it becomes an alkane for hydrogenation of alkenes. Okay, the next one is halogenation. So when you say halogenation, it's actually addition of halogen. So it could be a Cl2 or Br2 to the double bond. So both of the Cl2 or Br2 are actually uh, very reactive. Okay, so since halogens are very reactive and your alkenes have a lot of or very rich in electrons, so therefore there is actually no catalyst involved in the halogenation. So different from your hydrogenation, so your, your, your hydrogenation would require a metal catalyst, which is actually platinum, palladium, or nickel. But for halogenation, the addition of Cl2 or Br2 to the double bond wouldn't would not require any catalyst because of their high reactivity, okay? So basically, it's only chlorine and Br2 that is actually added for halogeny for the uh, alkenes or for the double, double bond. So the general reaction would be just like your hydrogen. So you have an alkene plus halogen. So it will attack to that uh, halogen there. So you notice that there is no catalyst, then this both of these uh, halogens would now be can uh, would now be attached to both of this carbon. So you notice that these uh, halogen there are actually now being uh, attached or bonded to that carbon that contains the double bond. So the double bond will be broken down and your halogens would now be attached to that carbon. So from alkene you will form an alkyl dihalide so it's a dihalide because both of because there are actually two halogens that are actually <coughs> attached to that carbon so it's not alkyl halide but alkyl dihalide okay so write a balance equation showing the chlorination of one pentane and bromination of trans two butane okay so you have your one pentane Plus, so it's chlorination, so you have chlorine, then you don't have a catalyst, okay, for the halogenation of alkenes. Then both of this chlorine will be added to the carbon to carbon double bond. So you can add chlorine there and you can add also chlorine there. Then this uh, double bond will be broken down. So it will form only a single bond. Okay, so from one pentin, you will have a product which is actually 1 to dichloropentane. Okay, it's now pentane, not pentane, because you can form carbon to carbon single bond. So the double bonds are actually broken down. So it's already a alkane. Okay, so one, two, one, two, dichloropentane. So one, two, three, four, and five. <coughs> so the next one is bromination of trans to butane. So every example of the uh, bromination, okay. So you have trans to butane, so you already knew that it's a trans because these substituents are actually opposite. Okay, that is 1, 2, 3, 4, that is butane. And carbon number 2 contains the double bond, so that is trans to butane. Plus your bromine, okay, so this is bromination or halogenation for alkenes. Your carbon to carbon double bond will be broken down, that becomes a single bond. And your Br will be attached to both of this carbon here. Okay, so that carbon there. Now your final product would now be 2,3-dibromobutane. So this is very important, halogenation, because we can actually distinguish, especially the bromination, we can actually distinguish uh, if given an unknown uh, organic compounds that actually contains an alkane or alkene. So if we are going to add bromine for, for both of these unknown compounds, we can actually distinguish whether this compound is an alkane or actually an alkene. Like for example, if you have a known compounds that contains an alkene or alkene, and you're going to add bromine for both of this uh, compound, okay? 
So, your bromine plus water, your bromine is actually color orange. Okay? That is the, the color for bromine. If you're going to add this to both of these compounds, okay, remember that your bromine will not react with your alkane. <coughs> okay? Why? Because it needs a, what? Bromine needs the catalyst, okay? For the monobromination for alkane. It should be light, in the presence of light or heat. Okay, so that would be needed so that it would be brominated for alkane. Okay, so monobromination. However, at normal condition, you are not uh, 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 introducing light or heat. You, you are just adding bromine. So for both of this compound, your bromine will actually not react with your alkane. So it will just be stays as color orange because that would be the color of your bromine. Okay? So that will determine that there is actually no reaction. You're just actually mixing them. Okay? And there is no reaction. However, if you have an alkene, then you, add, you will add bromine, then this would react. Okay? So that would be halogenation of alkene. So in this case, your alkene would stay, would now be brominated Okay, then it actually doesn't uh, 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 changes its color to color orange because of the bromine, but rather it will also be a transparent one. Okay, just like the present one. Okay, so that means there is actually reaction that is actually involved. Okay, that not just like your alkane that they are actually only mixed with the color of the bromine. But for alkene, it actually reacts with the bromine. So therefore, there's actually a reaction there. That becomes only a transparent. Then you can distinguish that this test tube is actually an alkene. And this one is actually an alkene. Okay, so this is actually a simple test for, for alkenes. So if given an unknown compound that actually contains an alkene or alkene, you can actually test them if, this compound is an alkene or this compound is an alkene by bromine test or bromination. So the last topic would be hydration or addition of water to alkene. So from the root word hydration, so hydra which means water. So we're actually adding water to alkene. So what would be the general formula for this? And by the way, the, there is a catalyst also for hydration. That's actually an acid catalyst. So you have an acid catalyst. So an acid catalyst here would actually be a sulfuric acid. Okay? So you can have sulfuric acid there as your acid catalyst. Or you can just put H+. So that is pertaining to a hydrogen ion, which is actually acidic. Okay? So you have a carbon-to-carbon -carbon double bond, which is an alkene. You will react this with water because we, have, we are adding water here. That is addition of water. With the presence of your acid catalyst, then it's actually the initial step would be your carbon to carbon double bond will actually react with this acid catalyst. There, it will be uh, deprotonated. So this acid there will actually be deprotonated and this hydrogen would now be attached to that carbon. Okay, because it actually reacts to that. And after that is the, remember that your oxygen and your water has actually two lone pairs. It's actually rich in electron. So after this is that the double one will be broken down and this becomes a positive. And the, the electrons of your water would now be attack your carbon, which is actually positive. Okay. In this case, <coughs> uh, your water would now be added to that. So your water would now be added there. Okay. So by the way, the catalyst, the catalyst is actually, it's not consumed on the reaction. Okay. The meaning of the catalyst is just to, to speed up the reaction, but it's actually not consumed on the reaction. Okay. So you, the water would now be attached there. Then this becomes a O plus. Okay. So to get rid of this O plus, the, the catalyst, which actually formed a bisulfate ion, would now be attack the hydrogen so that it will be goes back to sulfuric acid. 
Okay? Then, so therefore, so therefore, your catalyst should now be consumed on the uh, reaction. Okay? So then your OH would now be bonded to that carbon. So here, the first carbon will be bonded with hydrogen following that reaction there. And the OH would now be bonded to that carbon. So you have your H and OH. Okay. This is actually true for only symmetrical alkenes. So what do you mean by symmetrical alkenes? So in this case, this is actually symmetrical alkenes because if both of these are, they are actually the same with that R there. Okay? So this is actually symmetrical because that R, R there would have been the same with that R and R there. Okay? So that is symmetrical. So example of this would be a thing. So, this is in, okay, it's in now there. So, remember this, I think, is actually an example of a symmetrical alkene. Because both of these, that carbon there, so if you put a barrier there, that R there, which actually contains two hydrogens, would actually be the same with this hydrogen. Okay? So, it's just like you are, they're actually mirrored with each other. Okay? So, they are actually mirror. That is actually what we call symmetrical. If you put a barrier there, this, this is just a reflection of the other side. Okay? So, that's it. Okay, you have to, so ethene, if you are going to add, uh, <coughs> so this hydration, so you're going to add water in the presence of acid catalyst, so your, your H, so would be bonded to that. So the carbon, I know that's, that's not the one. That H there actually that H would be bonded to that carbon, okay? And this OH would now be bonded to that carbon, okay? So, actually, this is just the same as H and that H, okay? So, therefore, you would expect that this would be the product, so that carbon there would be would now have with H, and this carbon there would now have with OH. So, the product would now be an alcohol, okay? So, from ethane, ethane, then you are going to add it water in the presence of acid catalyst, the product would be an alcohol. So in this case, this is actually an ethanol. <coughs> so we will just not name uh, first this compound because we have not yet reached to, to the lessons about alcohols. Okay? But I, you just, I, I just want you to be aware that this actually is the ethanol or what we call the ethyl alcohol that is actually used for disinfectant Okay, and also it's present in uh, uh, alcoholic drinks like beers, rums, etc., etc. Okay? However, for hydration of unsymmetrical alkenes, it's actually different. For unsymmetrical alkenes, where actually there is actually two products that will be formed. Okay, one product would be a major product and the other product is actually a minor product because of its unsymmetrical. So, it actually governs with the rule that is actually being uh, formed or discovered by Vladimir Markovnikov. He's a, he's a uh, Russian chemist. Okay, so it follows uh, Markovnikov's rule. So, Markovnikov's. So, it's actually pronounced as Markovnikov's rule. Okay. So what's this rule all about? So it states that for hydration of alkenes, especially for unsymmetrical alkenes, the carbon-to-carbon -carbon double bond that has more hydrogen atoms will receive the hydrogen. Okay, take note of that. The carbon-to-carbon -carbon double bonds that contains, or the carbon that, can, that has more hydrogen atoms will receive the hydrogen being added. Okay? And the remaining carbon will form a bond with OH. So it follows that the rich will become the richer. So if that carbon contains more hydrogen, then it will be added with another hydrogen. Okay? And the OH will be added to the carbon that is actually as lesser hydrogen. Okay? So to further explain on that so let's take here for an example okay write an equation showing the hydration of one pentane okay so let's draw for one pentane 
Oh. Uh, I have here a uh, uh, example. Okay. So if you have your one built-in <coughs> hydration plus water, okay, you notice this is actually unsymmetrical. So if you have put a barrier there, because they are not really mirrored with each other, they are not mirrored. Am I right? So you have two hydrogens there, and that one there is not mirrored. Okay, because it's another atom. So that's what I meant by unsymmetrical. Okay, so this carbon here contains two hydrogen. Okay, that carbon there contains one hydrogen. Markovnikov's rule: the hydrogen will go to the more high to the carbon that has higher hydrogen that has more hydrogen. So you'd expect that this will be added with another hydrogen, and your OH would now be on that carbon. Okay, that would be Markovnikov's rule. You would expect that this would be the major product. Okay, so that would be the major product. You are actually forming two pentanol. Okay, so you notice it's the same. So you notice that that is the same. Okay, so the carbon with the more hydrogen will be added with another hydrogen, and the carbon with the with lesser hydrogen will be added with the OH. <coughs> okay. So this would now be the major product. Okay? So this is now the major product. However, you can also form the minor product, which means that your OH would now be attached to that carbon. So it will not follow the Markovnikov's rule, but rather it will just follow this reaction because it's a secondary product. So your carbon there will be attached with your OH and the hydrogen would now be there on the second carbon. In that case, you will form actually a 1-pentanol. So, remember this. Your OH would now be on the first carbon. And your second carbon would be added with your H. However, that is only a minor product. Okay? But the major product would be your 2-pentanol. So, you would expect that if you are going to react with 1-pentanol with, with water in the presence of an acid catalyst, okay, so, you would expect that you are actually forming two products. So, it's not just the two pentanol that is actually present, but there are actually two products present on that uh, situation, okay, or in that uh, reaction. However, uh, you will, would expect that two pentanol will follow the Markovnikov's rule, and therefore, this is actually the major product. While your one pentanol doesn't follow the Markovnikov's rule, then that would be the minor product. Then you will ex expect that this would be about uh, a percentage like this would be 70% in total for the reaction. And this would be 30% uh, only on the upon completion for the reaction. Because this is a major product, then it would be a higher percentage than your minor product. <coughs> Write an equation showing the hydration of trans to pentane. Okay, trans to pentane. So, you should draw first trans to pentin. So, 1, 2, uh, 3. Uh, for 1, 2. So, so 1, 2, uh, 3. Then, CH2, 2. I will just write that there. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Okay, trans to pentane. So 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Then you have your H. So they are trans to each other. Okay, that is a trans. So 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So that is that is now the trans to pentane. So it's a hydration. You have addition of your water. So you can either write this as H2O or H dash H. With the presence of acid catalyst, so you can have H plus or you can write also sulfuric acid. Okay, sulfuric acid is actually <coughs> the catalyst that is involved in here. Okay? So in this case, if it follows Markovnikov's rule, so, so what do you expect with the reaction? If it is if this uh, formation will follow Markovnikov's rule. Okay? What would be the product? Mm -hmm. 
both of these carbon are actually contains hydrogen. Okay? So, they have actually the same number of hydrogen. This carbon here contains one hydrogen and the other carbon there also contains hydrogen. So, you would expect that that the product would also be contained, uh, would have, uh, the other one would be one hydrogen there, okay, and the OH would be coming for that. So, in that case, the product would be CH3, CH2, okay, then you have C, then you have H, then you have OH, okay. Then you have also H here, H, okay. Then you have your CH3. So this would now be the first product. However, you can also put the OH there and the H would be there. Okay, CH3. Both of these reactions are actually following the Markovnikov's rule. Okay, that would be CH. I will erase this. Okay. So, both of this follows the Markovnikov's rule. So, it could be the OH would be from the second carbon or the first carbon. But, which of these? So, you have your two... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. This is 2 pentanol and 1 pentanol. I forgot the CH3. So this actually is CH3 because you have the CH3 there. Okay, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Ah, the product is not, it's actually 3 pentanol and uh, 2 pentanol. Okay. But both of these follows the Markovnikovs. Okay. Remember the Markovnikov's rule, the H will go to the <coughs> carbon with, with, with more H. But since this carbon are actually have the same number of H, then both of this carbon will, will have to be added with H. So they are actually, uh, this product are actually uh, follows Markovnikov's rule, then you would expect that they are actually, both of them are actually the major product. So that means they are actually 50-50. So in the reaction, this would be 50% and the second reaction would also be 50%. So both of them are actually the major product. Okay, They are actually present on the reaction because they are following the Markovnikov's rule. Okay?